My name is Ambrosia. I served in the Army, and I was stationed mainly in Fort Riley, Kansas for about five years of my enlistment. I served from August 2009 until January 2015, when I was medically retired. After the birth of my daughter, um, about six months after, I started sleeping a lot, like all the time. And I had a one-year-old and a newborn. I couldn't not you know, adult for the day. So I talked to a friend of mine and she said, well, I think you should go see a psychiatrist. At first I thought it was postpartum depression. And so they threw some drugs at me and said, okay, we'll see you in a few weeks. I ended up being hospitalized right after that. They uh, still thought it was postpartum depression and thought they would try and see how to fix that. And a couple months later I was hospitalized again. And that's when they decided that I had what they call peripartum bipolar one disorder. So it's bipolar one that um, showed its ugly head after or during a round pregnancy. After that hospitalization, I was told that I was going to be med boarded because you can't take medication for bipolar disorder and go to war. You can't be deployed. Becoming a civilian was really hard for me. Um, as soon as I got out, I hit a manic phase. A lot of the red flags I saw were pretty much the normal stereotypical um, uh, bipolar depression side effects, um, talking really, really fast where people can't really understand you or you're talking so fast that your mouth is moving faster than your brain. I wasn't sleeping. And one of the things that a bipolar person needs is a routine. And so I didn't have that anymore. And I started doing my nails frequently because that was what, the only thing I could get to clear my mind because you're not only you're talking so fast, but you're thinking a million things at the same time. And it's hard to express that and really say like, hey, my brain is like really fast, really moving. My last day in the military was 28th of January and May 20th, I think it was, is when I tried to commit suicide. That was a turning point for my family because that's when my, my mom really started to realize, oh, she really does have a problem. This is really a thing. It is a lifelong illness, which I think is very daunting to think about taking medication every day for the rest of my life to make sure that I think rationally, that I'm okay. So that's what the big change was, was just that my family was more kind of realized what was going on and why I had to be med boarded out of the military. The best thing I can say is to have a plan with your doctor. We have kind of figured out, okay, when I start going one way, then let's take an extra pill of this medication. Or if I start going down and start sleeping a lot and start not wanting to do anything, then okay, I'm gonna take a certain dosage of this other medication. We have a plan where when I start doing things, like seeing red flags, and then call him and say like, hey, I need to come in, um, just double check with you. What I started with was I would see a, a therapist every week. Um, sometimes we can get it out to two weeks, but during stressful situations like a, a friend moving away, as something as minute as that, um, you need to be seen more often because a lot of bad things can happen. A lot of red flags can start showing up if you start getting stressed out. So it does help a lot because it's, um, it's a safe place. I can see the therapist and kind of vent things out and kind of get a different perspective on it. One of the things I, I kind of live by is they have it, use it. It's 100% worth it. Even if you only serve your four years, or you only serve your six years, it's completely worth it because you get the lifelong bonds and you get all the benefits.